Hello everyone, welcome to Fari Makes. Today we're making a chicken pot pie. So we're gonna start off with making our crust. In a bowl, I'm going to add one cup of all-purpose flour. One third a cup of butter. So I'm using a salted butter. This has been chilled in the fridge, so just before starting this recipe, that's when I took it out the fridge. And just to make sure that the butter is evenly incorporated into the flour, I'm cutting it into cubes, so that way it makes the process a lot easier. I'm just gonna add some salt into the flour. I know the butter is salted, but adding a little bit more salt just helps elevate the dough. So I'm just gonna put on my glove here. It's a food handling glove disposable that I got from um, online. And this just kind of adds a little barrier between my skin and the dough so that it doesn't have too much body heat and it won't compromise the texture of the crust. Uh, so I'm just gonna sprinkle the butter all throughout the flour and just really take my time with this process to incorporate these butter chunks into the flour. So it's important that you take your time with this step and really mix this in to get that sandy like texture that we're looking for. Um, when it bakes up, the crust becomes really flaky and it's nice and tender. So this is the part where you want to spend a little care and attention to, and it really pays off in the end. Just make sure there are no big chunks of butter. You want to have it all mushed into the flour quite evenly. Okay, so I'm happy with that consistency. And now I'm going to add four tablespoons of chilled water. I'm just gonna mix this in. So it's not really so much mixing as it is just kind of compressing. So I'm just pressing the flour and the butter together with the help of the water that I just added. So you're just really using the palm of your hand and just pushing everything together. And with the aid of the side of the bowl, it really creates a nice disc where everything comes together. And as you can see, this is where the glove really comes in handy because nothing is sticking to my hand. There's no excess heat that's melting the butter and I'm moving pretty quickly so that you know I have minimal contact with the dough. So I'm happy with this shape. I'm gonna cover that with some plastic wrap and we're gonna put this in the fridge to chill and rest and that will make it easier to roll out when it's time to assemble the pie. Uh, you. Just leave it in there for as long as it takes to complete the other ingredients. So next we're going to work on our filling. So I have here two chicken breasts that I had seasoned up the night before. It was a simple seasoning of sea salt, cracked black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika, which I also refer to as my spice mix. So in a hot pan, we're just gonna add a little swivel of olive oil. and then just add the chicken breast in there. So we're just looking at this point to get some nice color on the outside of the chicken. We're not going to cook it completely, and I'll let you know why in a bit. While that's cooking, we'll prepare our aromatics. So I'm just cutting a half an onion, and we're going to do it in a pretty neat dice. We don't want any big chunks of onion, so we're just gonna take our time here and really make sure that our cuts are small and as uniform as can be. Okay, so our onion is done. We'll set that to the side. So our chicken's coming along. We're just gonna flip it, and that's the color that we're looking for right there. It's coming along beautifully. So we're cooked that for another five minutes. So our chicken's cooked. 
we're just going to take that off and put it on a plate let that rest so that way the juices can redistribute throughout and now we're going to work on building our sauce for the pot pie so in that same pan i'm adding the remaining stick of butter that's about two tablespoons and we're just going to melt that in there and the goal is to get all this little brown bits that are on the bottom of the pan off the bottom of the pan with the aid of the butter and the onions so we're just going to put that back on the fire and let that sweat so our onions are coming along nicely and every chance that I get I'm using my spoon to scrape up those brown bits and that's really gonna flavor and color our sauce so let that work so our so onions are sweating and now we're just gonna add a sprinkle of flour and this is building our roux or sauce to thicken it. So we're just gonna make sure we stir that flour in well, it coats all the onions and we're going to put that back on the fire so that the flour can cook out. Now we're going to finish the rest of our sauce. I have one and a half cups of water a half a cup of milk I just added and I'm just doing a couple spoonfuls of my spice mix which is again the garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, cracked black pepper and salt and I also added a bit of Italian seasoning and some cayenne in it just to give it that nice chicken pot pie flavor and a little bit of heat that sits in the back of your throat which is a nice warming effect. So we're going to add the liquid to our onions and flour mixture which has been cooked and then we're going to put this back on the fire to simmer. So our sauce is coming along nicely here. It's not quite thickened but it's looking good. And at this point it's when we're going to add our chicken. So we're going to cut the chicken up into decent sized cubes typical sizing that you would normally put in a pot pie and the reason why we didn't cook this all the way is because we're going to finish this in the sauce that we have just created this ensures that the chicken doesn't dry out it gets that flavor absorbed in it while it finishes in the sauce and it just tastes a whole lot better and it adds another level of flavor to it so this recipe uses two chicken breasts, which I find was just the right amount, uh, you know, considering all the other ingredients that I added. Uh, you can definitely downsize the pie size and, you know, use one chicken breast. Or if you want to double up on protein, definitely add as much chicken as you see fit. But for this recipe, two chicken breasts was just right. So our chicken's cut. We are now going to add this into our sauce and we're going to let this go back on the stove to one, finish cooking the chicken and two, thicken up a little bit more. So just make sure all the pieces are nicely covered and we're gonna put that back to cook. I'll say about five more minutes. So our chicken's cooked, our sauce is thickened up, and this is good to go. So we're just gonna put that to the side and we're going to now roll out our crust. So this is a crust from the fridge. Have my rolling pin. And now I'm just going to sprinkle the board uh, with flour. So that was just the pan that I'm going to put everything in and I always keep that as a visual so I know how big I want to roll my crust out to. So I'm just going to open up, unwrap my crust, and set the board up. So lightly flour and also flour the pin and just get a nice thin layer of flour. You don't need too much because that's going to make our crust hard and we don't want that. We worked hard on making a nice tender flaky crust so minimal amount of flour. And because it's a rectangular shaped pan I'm just shaping the crust into a rectangular shape and that helps it when I'm rolling it out. So just taking our time and I find that this crust is very forgiving. It's not too sticky once you allow it to do its thing and rest in the fridge. It's quite malleable and you can have enough to kind of like lift it up and move it about. 
So I'm just getting it into that rectangular shape and I want it to be fairly thin because you don't want a super thick crust on top of the pie. Uh, essentially, this is the only thing that's going to be cooked in the oven. So we just wanna make sure that it's a good thickness so that it cooks quickly and keeps everything nice and brown and crunchy. So as you can see here, there's some pieces that are ripping, which is quite fine. You just pinch it together just to kind of seam the middle and just roll it over with the pin. Uh, some parts that don't cooperate, you can just pull from the ends and just place it in the middle and just patch it up and put the rolling pin over to seal it in. So this dough is done. It fits about the sizing of the pan, so we're good to go. Now it's time to assemble. So we're gonna put our pan down. This I had sprayed with some olive oil spray just so that it reduces any sticking. We're going to add our chicken and sauce that we have built. And now, just make sure you scrape all that stuff out. You get all those onions and good bits. And as you can see, the bottom of the pan is clean, so we got all that flavor. And I'm just adding some frozen mixed veggies, literally straight from the bag, out of the freezer. Don't need to do anything else to them, just dump it in. Then we're just gonna mix that in and kind of distribute the veggies about. And we season the sauce well enough so that as these veggies cook, they will also get seasoned and flavorful. So, you know, that's kind of the point of just adding a little extra seasoning when you're building your sauce. Just keeping in mind of all the ingredients you're going to be adding. So I'm just pressing that in, making a nice even layer. And now we're going to add our crust. So I know this part is normally very daunting for people, but the crust, like I said, is very forgiving and it's super malleable. So you just fold it and transfer. Look how easy that is. I'm telling you, this crust recipe is the best. So we're just tucking in any corners. You don't wanna have too many pieces high up because those will burn if they're uh, not tucked in. All right, so now I'm just going to pierce it with a fork just to give it some air holes so that it doesn't puff up and kind of overflow. And I just glaze the top with some milk so it gets nice and brown in the oven. And here we have it after 45 minutes. This is the final product.